Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can create a searchable table view in our app with a field at the top and a list of stuff in the table view and as we kind of type it'll filter out uh, what we're looking for. Think of like Google search autocomplete. So with that being said, hit that like button down below uh, and let's jump right into it. So of course we're going to create a brand new application, single view, and we're going to call this searchable table view. Hit enter, save it wherever you'd like. And let's start by expanding this Xcode window to give ourselves some more room to work. Okay, so first and foremost, we need to implement a table view. So I'm gonna do that real fast. If you're not sure how to do that, I have separate videos detailing every step, um, or you're free to follow along also. But we're gonna create an outlet in here. It's gonna be a table. And we're also going to implement up here the delegate and data source. We are going to assign those delegates and data source. We also want another outlet for the field where the user is going to be able to type and filter. And let's see, what else do we need? We need two arrays. One is going to be data, if I can spell data correctly. And the other is going to be filtered data. And we need to implement number of rows and cell for row at index path. And did select row. Now let's head to our storyboard and bring on in a table view as well as a field. So let's set the background color of this to black. Search for a text field like so. Bring this in if it decides to load. And we're going to apply some quick constraints. So let's do 10, 10, 10, 52. Let's connect this to our field. And next, let's bring in a table view. Drop that on right there. Don't forget to connect your outlet. And next we need to apply constraints to this. So we're gonna do zero, 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 zero. And lastly, don't forget to add a prototype cell to your table view. So we're gonna, we're gonna bump this number right here. And we're gonna apply, rather add a identifier to the cell. And we're just gonna call it cell. Go back to your view controller. And let's see. So number of rows. Oh, this isn't correct. This was supposed to be number of rows. That looks right. Table view number of rows. We're going to return data.count. Remember, data is this array of strings up here that we've created, but there's nothing in it yet. The next thing we're going to do is for this cell for row, we're going to say let cell equals table view dot dq reusable cell for with the identifier index path. So the identifier we said was cell index path and we're going to do return cell and we're going to assign the text labels text to whatever is at that position in data. And let's build and run and see what we get. So hit command R, let it do, it do its thing, and actually make sure you change the device to the simulator and not a physical device. I have my phone plugged in, which is why I defaulted to that. So let's see our, well, we'll see an empty table view in a field at the top, hopefully, if we did everything correct. Give a simulator a second to load and boom. Okay, so we've got our fields up here that we can type in and our empty table view. So let's start putting stuff in our table view. Um, I'm gonna quickly type out, I guess, a bunch of names. And let's do, let's create a function in here and call it setup data. 
And in here, what we can do is we can say um, data dot append, and we can start tossing in strings. So let's do John and paste this. I don't know, two, three, six, nine, twelve, and change up these names: Abe, Jenny, Dan, Luke, Zach. Kevin, Brianna, uh, I don't know, Melanie, what other letters, Sarah, uh, Sean, and Terry, let's do one more T name, um, Tom, that works. So now if we hit Command R again, we'll see the table full of these names, like so. Awesome, so now what we wanna do is we want the user to be able to click in here and start typing like J, and this table view should filter out everything that's not, uh, that, that doesn't start with a J. So the way we do that is actually by implementing the field uh, delegate. So we're gonna say field.delegate itself. And what we wanna do is every time the person presses a character, take the text in here and in this filtered data, um, filtered data array, we want to basically put in all the strings that are prefixed with that query, quote unquote, basically the text that's in here, and we want to reload this table. So this is complaining because we haven't put up here UI text field delegate. That should go away in just a second, like so. And what we're going to have to do is figure out if, um, or rather figure out what function from the delegate we want. So I believe, let's see, UI text field, or rather we're gonna do text field, text did change, let's see. Text field, UI text field should change character. Mm, okay, that's questionable if that's the correct, uh, function, but we can actually use this function too. So what we're going to actually do up here is we're going to create, or in here is we're going to create, um, first we're going to return true actually, but we're going to call a function and we're, uh, we're going to call it filter uh, text and we're going to pass in the text fields text. So, and then we're going to create this function here and in here we're going to say Query is going to be a string. And basically, for now, let's just print out what text we're getting in here. So basically, every time the user presses a character, we should get that new string in there. And we can ignore this warning. So if I type in A, then A again, then A another time, we can see that the... Um, text is actually behind by one character and the reason is is because we want to take this text and also append on this replacement string i believe that's what we need to do let's see this is complaining because we're going to basically say if let text equals this because the text fields text is optional we're gonna come in here and say text plus the string. And let's see what we get in here. Let's expand this up, whoops, like so. Let's type in the letter A, get A, B, C, D, E, cool. So now that we have uh, the string captured, we can start talking about how to actually filter the table. So to filter the table, like I mentioned, we want to find all of the all of the strings rather in uh, our data that begin with our uh, query in the text that we've typed in here, and put those results in this filtered data array. The other thing we want to do is reload the table. So in these uh, two functions, the number of rows and cell for row, we want to make two changes. For the number of rows, we want to say, before this return data count, we're going to say if filter data isn't empty, 
return its count. Otherwise, we're going to return the data count. In other words, if we put stuff in the filtered array, we want to only return the number of things in there because we're not showing everything in data. Similarly, down here, we're going to copy this and we're going to say if filter data isn't empty, use that array. Otherwise, use this array. So the text will be from filter data uh, if it's not empty. Otherwise, use the data array. So the last thing we need to do in here is basically filter out of the data array um, everything that starts with this query. So something interesting to understand is all of this is case sensitive and these names are all capitalized. So what we want to do is take account of the capitalization when we go over the array and try to find everything that starts with uh, this string. So we're going to first say filtered data remove all. And the reason we do that is because we might have already typed in something and we want to remove the results so we don't get duplicates shown up, showing up in the table view. And we're going to say for string in data, if string, I believe it starts with, yep, if the string starts with query, we are going to um, append it to filtered data. And let's see if we have a complaint. This is giving us an error because value optional type string optional. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to say guard let query equals query else return. The reason we did string optional is because up here we basically uh, would have the text from the text field as optional. But actually, now that I think about it, looking at this, we're already doing an if let up here. So we can actually change this and we can actually remove this. So it's no longer a string optional, it's a normal string. And like I mentioned, we need to take account of the capitalization here. So we're going to say if string, which is a string in data, um, lowercase version of it, so if string lowercase starts with query lowercase, then we can append the string to filtered array. And after we're done going through this loop, we need to say table reload data. And once we call that reload function, because now we have stuff in the array, um, basically we're going to show um, the number of things in that filtered array. A edge case that I just thought of is if we put in a string that doesn't exist in the data array, we're basically going to show uh, nothing, right? We should show nothing as in that we couldn't find anything. But in this case, we're going to show um, the original data. So hit command R for me and let's have this build and run. And like so, we see our list. Let's type in the letter J and look at that. We get everything with J. And notice when we press backspace, it didn't actually clear everything. Um, but let's type in K, and we get everything with a K. T, O, we get Tom. Now let's type in something longer. So let's do like, yeah, something super long. And what we should get here is all of these results not showing, but in this case, they are showing. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to create a, another variable up here and call it filtered. And in here, what we're going to say is if filter data is empty, we're going to say filtered true. Rather, actually, we don't even need this. We can say filtered true. And down here, we can say return if it's filtered zero, otherwise the number of things in data. And the reason we're doing zero here is if filtered data doesn't have anything in it, as in it didn't get into this condition, we know that whatever the string that we typed was doesn't exist within the data. So we should, should, we should show zero results. 
So if we build and run and start typing in something we don't have in the array, let's say like Ralph, we see nothing. If we come back and start typing in Kevin, we see K, J, and so on and so forth. That's basically how you build a pretty simple table view that you can search. Now, of course, there's um, other things you can do by adding the alphabet picker on the side here, like the, the context app that Apple has made. You can alphabetize this, the things in the table view, which makes searching look cleaner, also easier for the user. But it's fairly simple. It basically just adds a couple conditions to our basic table view implementation. And search fee searching and search fields for a table view are pretty critical at this point. Um, with the amount of data that people have to look through and sift through. So uh, if you found this video helpful, leave a like down below. If you have questions, by all means, leave comments. I always love hearing from you guys. Subscribe if you're new for daily Swift videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.